This segment is all about selling your business for max profits. Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. This is a special series all about growing and selling your business for max profits. Joining me on this segment is our esteemed guest expert, Sergio De Caesar. He's the founder of Max Business Profits. And Sergio is also a best selling author featured in the book Elite Business Leaders, a number one seller on Amazon. He's also a certified profit and growth expert, a certified value builder, certified profit acceleration expert, certified business coach, and certified magnetic mind coach. And he's also a business broker in Florida. Sergio, welcome to the show. Hello, Mark. I got to tell you, you make me sound so great. I'm going to have to carry you your intro around with me wherever I go. So when people ask me, <laughs> we're just going to play it. It's awesome. We'll put that on a recorder. So you just push the button. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so Sergio, we're talking about selling your business for, for max profit. So that leads me to the question, when should people consider selling their business if they consider it at all? Well, all things being considered, okay, you always want to sell your business while you're making your highest amount of profits. Now, that being said, that doesn't mean that highest amount of profit is the best time to sell for your particular business. Like I said, I mentioned in the previous episode, you got an $800,000 uh, a year lawn care or landscape business. I don't think selling it, you know, to someone to make a 5% net profit is the time to sell it. And, you know, we, we've we got to do some work there. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot of factors that are in play. And as long as you're not selling, like when you're behind the eight ball, then you can kind of take advantage of these other factors. Well, when not to sell, <laughs> when your wife gets sick and has, has to be hospitalized, when when you're down and, you know, you can't make it to work anymore. And that, that speaks to other problems. Um, a lot of people say, well, you know, the economy is going to change. Well, guess what? The economy usually has very little to do with whether or not a business will sell for maximum profit. If you've got a good business and you're doing a great multiple in your business and you've got turnkey systems, everything is turnkey, owner doesn't have to be there, somebody will acquire you. You know, to that point, you know, coming out of the recent pandemic, we're were things surprising to you? Because people would think that that would, would have been a terrible time to sell. And I, I hear that that was quite the opposite. Well, depending on what state you were, you were in when this all went down. Um, yeah, there were some times when things were locked down. You actually couldn't get around and go visit the businesses themselves. But it didn't really. Look, a lot of businesses are owned by baby boomers. Um, we, we've got like 70 million baby boomers. And over the next 15 years, they've got to exit. Because if they don't do it voluntarily, um, the laws of nature are going to take over there and they're going to they're going to come out either way. So a lot of wealth is tied up in that baby boomer generation. We call it a, a silver tsunami um, and they've got to get out. So I know that with COVID, a lot of those people actually got set back a couple of years. They were on the verge of selling, but all of a sudden, you know, ink, revenues drop precipitously and they have to make up now for that. So we're starting to see some of that come about. So when people are, begin to consider selling their businesses, what's the number one question that's on their mind? What kind of questions do you hear when they first reach out to you? Sure. The number, well, the number one question is going to be how much, okay? And then we have a whole valuation process to go through with them. Even if you're not going to sell tomorrow, you want to get a valuation done. You need to know where you stand right now. Because like we said in previous episodes, if you're banking on selling your business for a million dollars and I, you know, it gets valued at 800 or 700 or 600, we've got some work to do. The number two question is, how long will it take? Well, the number two question is easily answered because I can tell you in this neighborhood, in Florida generally, um, a business takes about nine months to sell. OK, give or take. I've seen businesses and there's some on the listing services for they've been there a year now. Maybe they're in their second year and you're asking yourself, OK, so what's wrong with this business that it hasn't sold yet? And the number one reason, right, most businesses are not selling is because their books 
are not clean. So does that does that lead to maybe they overvalued their business when you say the books aren't clean? That means the numbers don't make any sense. Well, more to the second point, it's not that they overvalued it. They can't prove the valuation. In other words, you know, they they want X amount and that X amount boils down to, say, a 2.5 multiple. But when you look at their books, you know, it's like, OK, how did you come up with that? Because you're not making that seller discretionary earnings that that net profit to justify that multiple. And there's a lot of ad backs and stuff like that. And ad backs are nothing more than the business owner using the business to do personal stuff. Like sometimes he'll buy a car, the business pays for it. He's got a kid in college. He's paying the kid a salary to be in college and he's writing it off as an employee thing. Right on. So, are, you know, are there a lot of myths or misconceptions around that value number? Because I, you know, you hear so many different people throwing multiples around and what's the right multiple? Yeah, well, I mean, it's all it's all over the Internet, right? Plug your numbers here and we'll tell you what it's worth. Well, none of it's true. None of it's true. Very, they're, they're giving you partial picture, right? They're not giving you the full. I've got a book. It's about this thick. I pay about 350 bucks <laughs> a year for it. And it basically gives me most all the industries and it tells me exactly how they should be evaluated. Okay. Some of them, it's a percentage of gross. Some of them it's assets plus what we talked about earlier, seller discretionary earnings. And that's all those seller discretionary earnings may have a multiple to them. So that multiple, especially if you're over a million dollars, you're grossing over a million dollars, that multiple will jump. It'll go from like say two to four or five. So every business has its has its nuances as to how it should be sold properly. Now, one thing I'll say: the businesses that we have sold are generally clients we have worked with. So when I do the valuation and we bring it to market, we have a valuation. I can show anybody who's looking. This is how I valued the business. We've got three different methodologies. Here's here's what we know it's worth. And that's, that's helped incredibly. Most business brokers don't do that. They go out there, they get a bunch of numbers on what's sold. They come up with a medium price. They go, here's what we think you can get right now. I think that does the business owner a disservice. So besides the numbers, you've mentioned in, pre in a previous episode that a big mistake people make is they're too in, the business uh, count relies on them too much. Is, do you find that to be like the number one reason besides the numbers that business are un, businesses are unsellable? That's a big one. Yeah, that's up there in the top two or three. And like I said, having having cloudy books doesn't help. But yeah, the owner being an integral part of everyday operations is a big no-no. My job when I work with the owner is to basically take him out of the mix. And, you know, one particular instance uh, reminds me, I, I sold a budget blinds franchise uh, about two years ago now. And I worked with him for a couple of years. He was the business. He went to the home. He got the measurements. He plugged them in. He installed them. He delivered them. He did everything. I said, listen, there's nothing to buy here. You're selling somebody's a, you're selling somebody's a job with within a franchise. Let's get you out. Let's get you a showroom. Let's get some delivery people. Let's get a van. Let's get a storefront. And he, God willing, thank, thankfully, he listened to me. And three years later, we valued that business at 1.75. And I got exactly 1.75 for it. Fantastic. It sounds like he bought himself a job to begin with there. So that so well, anytime you're happened. dealing, yeah, anytime you're dealing with franchises, I gotta tell you, they're they're not looking for someone who's gonna build up the location and sell it. They're looking for you to be the owner operator for the rest of your life. So think about that before you get into a franchise. Ah, that's a fascinating insight. Sergio, for folks listening who uh, resonate with this episode and would love to get your help with their business, how could they find you, connect with you, and learn more? Well, as usual, it's pretty easy to find me. You can email me at Sergio at MaxBusinessProfits.com, or you can call or text me at 239-580-7408. And if you get a chance, come on over to the website, MaxBusinessProfits.com. Sergio, this has been terrific. I really appreciate you sharing with my audience this entire series, and I wish you continued success for you and for all of your clients. Mark, it's been an absolute pleasure, and I can't wait for us to do this again sometime. That was Sergio De Caesar. He's the founder and creator of the Max Business Profits Business Alchemy System. I'm Mark Imperial. That's all for now. 
and we'll see you again next time. Thanks for joining us.